this old guy goes to an amusement park and like he, you see the horrors of aging and oh, elder abuse no. and like all this stuff. And it is like really dark. Yeah, why do people keep going to this amusement park? It sounds like it sucks. Yeah, this park, <laughs> I don't want to go here. <laughs> I mean, it's the new Disney attraction. <laughs> Hey, it's the Rebel Taxi Pizza Party Podcast, and I said we could have legacy members back, and it looks like we do. I'm Pan Pizza, who are you people? Oh, hey, I'm Ken. And I'm Daft Pino. I'm Jake Neutron. Yeah, it's Jim is back. Where have you been, Jim? Uh, you know, living life, having a kid, made a cartoon, all ah. sorts of stuff. Why have a kid and a cartoon? <laughs> Yes, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Tell us about your Did cartoon. I was going to ask about the kid first. <laughs> oh, the kid. Well, oh, yeah, that too. My yes, son. the kid. Oh, yeah, I know, I know where Pan's loyalties lie. He was, he was like, <laughs> the Children. cartoon. What about that cartoon? Cartoons? Let's talk Someone about say cartoons? Ooh. What a the, cartoon. The, <laughs> well, my son's a year old, over a year old now. Or just had mm-hmm. his year, his birthday, mm-hmm. first birthday. And he's doing good. He likes, he's, he's really into his Miles Morales uh, action figure from Spidey and his amazing friends nice. and he's crawling not walking yet um and he's doing good but yeah my cartoon is called film rot video it is a uh, animation video essay hybrid basically mm-hmm. um and there's only two out one is just a concept basically explains the concept it's a guy in his tv talk about movie kind of film history and film terms and stuff and they did a history i did one that's what are bad movies and it goes through like the history of bad movies which is Mm -hmm. sort of relatively bad movies are have always been around but the history is relatively recent and it goes through that and i'm working on another one now and it has songs that i do because i did all you know a lot of the music on knock force so i wanted Mm -hmm. to get back to that and and yeah so check it out sub to my channel which you probably already do plug plug link in the description and yeah yeah thank you pal but yeah that's kind of what i've been doing and all the other videos and i'm sure i'm forgetting several other projects and stuff but yeah, what have you been doing, Pam? Uh, working on some cartoon, yeah, a pilot, an indie pilot, just, just trying to get it done, and you know, it's a real sc- screw around, see what happens. Yeah, I'm, I don't, I just want, I'm, I'd just be happy if one of it was done. It's really getting there. Yeah. Anime. I mean, developing animation takes a really long time, so I don't think people realize. The developing part is the hardest aspect. Yeah, and it's like I'm st- I'm I'm essentially figuring things out as I go along because it is animated in Premiere Pro, a video editing software. Oh yeah, I mean, hey, you know they made Twelve Ounce Mouse on Final Cut. So. Yeah, just like <laughs> whatever works. I found out uh, Robert Valley, the uh, the artist for uh, Sigma Blue or whatever blue in that uh, Love Death Robot short, he animates mm-hmm. in Photoshop. That was Photoshop? Yes. I don't know why the wow. fuck he animates in Photoshop, but it's like, I guess I can't judge. Well, isn't, like, Black Dynamite also animated in Photoshop? Was? Adult Swim? Yeah, I thought it was. I think the f- the pilot was in Flash, possibly. Yeah, I, I always remember it as a Flash show. I don't know, though, but that's how I the remember game, it. The game Skullgirls is animated in Photoshop, and I recall some people were like, this is a terrible idea. Why are we animating Photoshop? But do most people use... What do most people use? I don't even know. Uh, so. Toon Boom and... Uh, uh, Toon, Boom. Um, Toon yeah, Boom or, or Flash. Adobe Animate. Yeah. Or even that one thing like I'll, TV paint. I'll still call it Flash even if it's Animate. I use Open yeah. Tunes because that worked best for what I needed. And it was free. That was that's, that's the one that was like um, Ghibli and Futurama, right? Yeah, I think so. Yes. Oh, really? Didn't they give that, give yep. that program out for free? I didn't know those parts, but okay. Did you pay <laughs> for yours? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. No, I remember, I remember it was like a whole huge thing like um, when it became... When it, when it came out for free and it was like being boosted, it's like, oh yeah, uh, Studio Ghibli and Futurama used this. Um, they were showing some like shots from the shows or show and movies. Hmm. Does that mean Futurama is not animated on paper or is it inked in open tunes? I'm not sure, but um, it has uh, something in it, a feature where um, doing hand drawing, it can assume in betweens hmm. through the way you drew them. Interesting. Very interesting. And it's usually good for like slow tracking shots, or like if you want like a character to like, there's a lot of frames, but you don't want to have to redraw every single one of them. 
Yeah, that's why I draw sketchy. That makes it easier to draw more frames. Oh, that, that's why I make mine look like absolute garbage. Hell yeah. So nobody noticed. <laughs> so people were like, I'll let this go. Yeah. It looks horrible. I feel like I remember trying to use that um, well, in-between system in open tunes, and it was too confusing because like, you basically had to draw... Every time you made a drawing, mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted two lines to like um, connect to motion-wise for the computer, you had to draw them in the same direction. Oh, God. And that sounds fine until you go to do it and you realize, huh, this is actually easier to draw this direction than it is the other direction when the position has changed. You know, maybe with better AI, we'll have better in-between frames. Maybe. Interpolate. One day. Yeah, yeah. Converting. Gotta get 60 FPS animation. Yeah. How long do you think it'll take, Pan, between the time of the release of your cartoon and someone making it 60 FPS? Oh, no. The day after. Sitch plating. It'll actually look fluid instead of blocky and jank. Or it might look fluid and jank. Yeah. We'll see how well, how limited my limit animation will, will work with people or not. Has has anyone done 60, like a major thing done 60 yet or no? If, if they... I mean, video games I've heard do, but I mean, like, I don't, yeah, Illumination or nobody is, like, going to do Some that. insane person out there, possibly. I would love to see uh, Illumination make 60 FPS. Stuff. I don't believe they have because it probably would weird out the audience. Yeah, or they'd have to pay the animators double. And they're not doing yeah. that. Yeah, well, yeah. it's no, 3D, so no, they definitely so... interpolate that shit. Yeah, it's 3D, so it's like they got the the keys. They don't gotta worry about that. It'll look but weird. It's like yeah, a lot a lot more time in rendering. Yeah, just uh, way more time. Just look up. Remember the Hobbit movie, the live action Hobbit prequel movies? They uh, oh, they had mm -hmm. like forty eight frames per second. Like, there's a trailer out. Look up forty. 48 fps uh hobbit trailer it looks like it's fast forward no i i saw it i saw the hobbit in the 3d like the the way he you know peter jackson intended mm -hmm. like in the higher frame rate in 3d and the 3d popped but it looked like like a soap opera oh yeah like it looked it looked yeah. it looked like garbage. motion smoothing and it was like so embarrassing that they thought like this was a good idea because it he he has like in the first one he has one of the Doctor Who's um, Sylvester McCoy is in it, and it looked like like an eighties Doctor Who, not a the new Doctor mm -hmm. Who, and like it looked like that kind of production with him in it. It just added to the extra <laughs> shittiness yeah. of it. I was like, you spent like three hundred million dollars on the two hundred million dollars, I think, on each movie, and it looks like this. And then by the time the second and third ones came out, less theaters, and this is in New York, had what they called HFR at the time. And I don't think anyone, maybe Avatar, is Avatar 2 doing it? Does I hope so, know? so it looks like shit. <laughs> well, that's what happened with Gemini Man, the Will Smith movie. Oh, yeah. It was 120 FPS. Whatever that looks like. When they released it on DVD, I think they just dumped it down to 60 FPS. Oh, wusses. They, 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 they pussed out. Give us the full 120 experience. The animation looked good, except in bright daylight. <laughs> Ow. Yeah. I think it's one of those things that, like, um, doing higher FPS is both more expensive um, mm -hmm. and obviously more frames, but it doesn't necessarily look better because, like, I mean, soap operas run at a higher FPS, but we think that most people will look at them and think, oh, that looks cheap. They think that... The, they yeah. associate it with soap operas, so they're always like, going to see that. Why does it have a higher frame rate than real life? What's that about? How, you know? Well, speaking of a higher frame rate, Pan. Huh. You got a new phone that can do 120 FPS. I've oh, yeah. I, got, I can play Genshin. Well, I didn't play Genshin. I played, let me look it up, uh, Honkai Impact. Wait, what phone? Uh, it's the iPhone the 13 Pro, because I, I think I went with oh. the same one for like seven four five years i don't know a long time oh funny story i literally did the same thing yeah. like two weeks ago where my phone the microphone stopped working so i couldn't make calls oh, so i no. had to get i got the same and but see people use phones so infrequently now it took me days to figure out what was going on oh and man so anyway but yeah i have the same phone it's it's pretty cool it's a good phone Ooh, what color i just got the black 13 pro and also for the camera and because i shoot a lot of stuff yeah like i like the fisheye sort of lens where it's like damn now i can see everything in a photo oh the 0.5 yeah i like I like yeah. the, the point five lens is like my favorite when shooting. I actually shoot my stuff now with that because it brings in the viewer mm -hmm. more. Yeah, it's not flat. It's, it's now really you see cool. the whole Does environment. Cinematic mode yet? 
Oh, cinnamon. Hmm. I I have, but I've never. It it's not struck me yet. I have my. I mean, around with it. all does it all is the only thing it really does is just blur the background. Pretty much. Um. Yeah. And probably it does yeah. some tracking, but like you can that, rack focus. Yeah, it tracks the faces, but everything's gonna be slightly blurry. It just didn't. I don't know. It was annoying when I was trying to use it at Disney because I was in like the small world ride and I was trying to look at stuff and it kept like noticing people were in front of me and would focus <laughs> on them even though they were at the bottom of the screen. And yeah. It wouldn't matter how much time, how many times I would press the background. I'd be like, no, focus on the background. It would just go back to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the cinematic mode is kind of like it's not really cinematic. It just makes this weird smudge around everything. It looks weird. It doesn't look right. Uh, I believe the 13 Pro can do ProRes. ProRes. ProRes is a higher dynamic range of color, but it's a lot of gigabytes. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. HDR. No, like it can do, it can do 4K, but mm-hmm. I don't shoot in that because I can't. Final Cut does not do 4K, or at least the version. Remind HDR so. reminds me. Like I looked, I was watching a Linus Tech Tips video yesterday on CRTs, and I was like, why is the t- why is this whole video green, like a greenish tint? And it was like, oh, he's got high dynamic range on. Okay. Cause I, my, uh, I guess my monitor doesn't have high dynamic range where I sh- shut it off, so it just looks like garbage. Oh, you could, you could have watched it on your phone. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah, because for, for those who don't know, high dynamic range, HDR, like if you don't have an HDR compatible thing, sometimes it just looks like green, like we, a weird greenish tint on everything. I tried, I illegally downloaded Iron Man 1, and it's like, ew, it's all green. <laughs> Wait, recently? Hmm? Like you downloaded it recently? Uh, a couple Sorry years back. Oh, okay. Before Disney yeah, Plus, I guess. That's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> For Disney Plus, they have the IMAX enhanced versions of the Marvel films. Cuckoo. So you can watch it to yeah. like the better aspect ratio. Well they they did that because um HBO Max is better quality than they are. And I think they're a little embarrassed. Oh man! I was gonna, I was gonna continue on to that. So as I was telling Pan before, uh, out of all the streaming services I've used, HBO Max has like the best pixel density, I guess. Yeah. Very sharp. No, it's always, and it's the better, I don't know, better library at least right now. At this point, <laughs> we'll see <laughs> how long that stays. Um, and the downloads, because I watch a lot of stuff on my way to work, mm-hmm. like usually hold up better. Disney Plus. Uh, usually I have to hit play before I leave the house and pause it and then hit play when I get on the subway or it won't sometimes it won't play even with my mm. new phone it's just Disney Plus is too, and, and they have a lot of I don't know they have a lot of, I want to finish Light and Magic that's a good documentary mm-hmm. so, what's it about uh, it is about industrial light and magic um, and so they have all the people who made did the special effects for Star Wars and the original trilogy but it's directed by Lawrence Kasdan who wrote Empire Strikes Back and Rage Lost Ark and has access to all these people so you're getting like you know all the cool stories all the like how they like basically had to like invent a special effects division that was like that for the first one um, all the behind the scenes stuff it's pretty good but it's also that it's made by a good director and you hear from joe johnston who did the first avenger and rocketeer because he was like the lead special effects dude on or one of the lead guys on the those movies did uh george so, ever show up yeah. oh george is in it a lot george yeah is in it a lot. archival he, he or do they like follow him around he's like stop talking to me no no they, he's a he's <laughs> he's a talking head in it but he um <laughs> he comes off more as just the boss um because that's the the one thing i like about behind the scenes star wars is that it is like an amazing or the original trilogy is that there's an amazing amount of insanely talented people mm. who worked on those movies and he's just probably one of the luckiest people in the world that he got the people he got to do mm-hmm. that movie you know and it's like that i don't think he didn't do anything and when i say that people have gotten mad at me <laughs> online for saying like oh you're because i made a video about his uh ex-wife who helped edit and i always get like you're taking away from george i'm like well i'm not i'm just saying like film is a collaborative medium and a lot of those people are what made those three movies what they are you know so like the editors he had on that mm-hmm. not just his ex-wife but other people the special effects people the cinematographer like the producers like if you look at all those people they're like super talented like invented all the special effects that we know those today it's just anyway it's a good documentary. Mm. I recommend it. You know, if you're not watching like 
whatever the Marvel show is at the moment. All that stuff. You know. Or Primal. You yeah, should yeah. just be watching Primal. Ooh, I remi- still watch that. Reminds me. I got a... Well, oh, there was what? another movie uh, that came out recently, an animated film. It's called Mad God, and it's uh, made by Phil Tippett, uh, who was, who worked on the original Empire Strikes Back, uh, uh, RoboCop, tons of tons of movies doing stop motion stuff. And have yeah. any of you seen Mad God? Nope. It's I a not. Shutter original. Is yeah, on... yeah. Oh, Shutter got mm-hmm. it. Oh, because it played in theaters last summer, and I think did okay in the limited screenings it had. That's good. I mean, hey, it's yeah. almost Halloween. We should sign like. Up uh, for let Shutter. me explain to you like the uh, backstory to this movie because Mad God was w- was basically thirty years in the making. Uh, he started the movie in late nineties, late late eighties after RoboCop two, and um, he he noticed that, huh. Uh, computers are starting to take over, especially because he worked on Jurassic Park, and he put it on hold, but he knew he would come back to it eventually, and that eventually became, like, 2013, like, 20 years later, and uh, mm-hmm. he did a Kickstarter, and that was successful, and as of, I think, 2021 or 2022, he uh, finally finished the film, and the film is essentially, like, a partially stop-motion, partially live-action with, like, stop-motion backgrounds and stuff, mm-hmm. but it's, there's no, it's hard to explain because there's no plot sort of it's just a guy essentially descending down into hell yeah and just seeing all sometimes you just want to animate some fun goofy shit and some horror shit basically yeah well you could say there's no plot but it's just very loose about it it's just walking essentially it's a walking simulator movie and it's just like the most gruesome stuff you'll ever see and there is almost no uh, computer assistance except for stuff like compositing yeah, it's a crazy ass passion project. Oh man, this makes me want to get Shutter. I always get it for like certain movies, and then don't yeah, keep it. Yeah. But did you ever see the amusement park, the George Romero movie they restored? Mm-hmm. No. It is if you if you ever want to feel bad about aging. Uh, oh no! It, 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 it's basically it's a it's a, against like ageism. It was made as a propaganda thing. By this thing and this company with this church or something. I forget. I made a video about it and I knew what I was talking about then. But it's basically like this old guy goes to an amusement park and like he, you see the horrors of aging and oh, elder abuse no. and like all this stuff. And it is like really dark. Yeah, why do people keep going to this amusement park? It sounds like it sucks. Yeah, this park. <laughs> I don't want to go here. <laughs> I mean, it's the new Disney attraction. Defunct Land's going to do a thing about. They should have. They oh, should man. bring it. Back. Eisenberg showed up, and then uh, Michael Eisner <laughs> came in to fuck it over. Yeah, probably. Michael Eisner has to be in. Yeah, America yeah, Park classic. Land, you know? He he <laughs> he managed to do. I don't know how. Oh, look, it has to go through him. So of course it would have to. You know, he'd show up most likely. I don't know. Wasn't there a a, a film? That was actually shot at Disneyland, but they didn't tell anyone there. Oh yeah, um, Escape from yes. Tomorrowland, I believe. Yeah, I saw that. Um, it was it wasn't that great. You kind of want it to mm-hmm. be. I know the theme park people like hate it because I brought it up to someone. I like I was like, yeah, I reviewed it a long time ago, and it was it was fine. And they're like, no, they're like, don't get like the magic of oh, Disney. No. Oh no, like, oh okay, the, wow, you're, that's weird. You're talking to Disney adults. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, you know, anytime, and I've seen people do it online too. They're like, "Fuck oh, that man. movie! It's being dark." Like, like I'm just like, like I don't think it's the greatest thing, but can't you just appreciate what they accomplished? Like, yeah, that's this... pretty amazing that they filmed yeah, this in movie Disney. Sucks. I, I, I found, yeah, I found it kind of. I don't know. It wasn't amazing. I mean, nobody talks about nah. it. Right? So I mean, like um, Disney right could have like said, "Hey, ban this movie," but they were like, "Nah, let's ignore it and not give it any uh, what's it called, Streisand effect." Yeah. Yeah. I I was reading articles at the time. That's what they wanted to do. Is like they're like, let's just let this go. Let's not sue them. And I mean, I'm sure that and uh, what's it? Um, the movie, the Florida Project, which is sort of adjacent to Disney, whatever the Florida mm-hmm. one is um get into like kind of the darker side but i it, they are really expensive and like i think it's it tomorrow escape from tomorrowland was about a dad who loses his job while he's on vacation and he slowly kind of like goes insane but i've seen the prices of those places and i was like yeah i would go insane too if i like lost my job at you've Disney seen that there. star wars place where it's like hey five thousand a night or something yeah it, it's like I've, I've seen the hotel rooms and everything i was like this doesn't look like it's five thousand a night nah to hell with that i mean i 
I would love to do Disney at one point, I guess, but the price is like, yeesh. I, Isn't, I, oh, well, I don't know. One of us went to Disney recently. Yeah, I went, I went to Disney, was it yesterday? Yeah. Yes? <laughs> was it? I, like, okay, I went to Disney, and then, like, um, I was so damn tired, I slept all of today, so I kind of forgot if there was anything in between, but um, I went to Disney. <laughs> I went to Magic Kingdom and um, Hollywood Studios, and the two things that I took away from that was, one, that Runaway, um, what's it called? Ride is awesome. Mm-hmm. I love all the animation on that. And two, I forgot that, like, Magic Kingdom is based off of Disneyland, and all of Epic Mickey is based off of Disneyland. Yeah, yeah. So the whole time I was just looking at everything and I was like, "You're, that's that was a level. That was the stage. You can jump on that in the game." <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of corrupted Disneyland uh, locations. Yeah. And I, I didn't like for some reason it never clicked to me when I was younger like that this was all based off of real attractions. I thought like it took like inspiration maybe, but I didn't realize that for some some of the stuff it was one to one where like. Mm-hmm. You walk up to um, the Adventureland area, and like the entrance to it is exactly how it is in the game, except like less corrupted. So it's just like I feel, this feels so weird. I'm such a big Epic Mickey fan. If I had went to Disneyland, it probably would have been even more accurate because I know that um, Disney World they have like the Liberty something area. Meanwhile, it's New or- New Orleans mm-hmm. in Disneyland. Oh yeah, the simulacra of like American Town kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like I'm really there. Yeah, it's in America. I'm in Epcot. I can Get visit really in all the places in Florida. I can I can visit all the presidents. I can see all of them. Hmm. Speaking of world leaders, yeah, uh, Morbius oh. is number one on Netflix today. Oh man! What you goddamn you? I don't want that. I was uh, I didn't want to pay for it, and I also didn't feel like uh, doing illegal stuff. So I was like, this will be somewhere. Yeah. Please Disney Plus, because that'd be funny. I don't want that crap. I saw Morbius in theaters, and I was like, wow, this movie movie's not good it's just boring maybe maybe you just didn't get it I, I can't trust that guy he 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 gets to mars too fast it's like take your time oh, oh right he was in that band yeah like like that's too fast i don't like it fucking so warp speed trust. into fucking mars like like wow rich guy 30 seconds <laughs> no i i i kind of want to see it but apparently he doesn't oh, say it's man. more than time but part of me when i see people joke i'm like are they joking does he say it's Morbin time? So I just live in this... Is that like in a trailer or something? Nobody or saw that crap. That up? No, it never happened. I mean, I think someone made up the joke that he says it's Morbin, <laughs> Morbin time. But, like, I don't know anyone who's confirmed to me that he has or hasn't. And even when people do, I'm like, I don't know. They could be messing with me, too. So I, I just don't. He could say it's Well, it's Morbin like the uh, dance sequence with Matt Smith by the song uh, X... XC, I think so. It's uh, off the meds. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's a foreign band, uh-huh. right? But the lyrics sound like "Have sex, have sex." I poop my pants. I poop my pants, and everyone just kind of ran with that. Oh man, <laughs> magical. Yeah, man. Matt Smith is picked like so many bad franchise moves post Doctor Who. Remember, like he was going to be in Star Wars, and that didn't work out. Oh. And and then because he was going to be in mm-hmm. episode nine, and and then I don't know what he was going to be, but he wasn't in the movie. And then he was in Terminator oh, Genesis, and he's like, "They're they're going to make a sequel to this. I haven't made." And now he's in the Game of Thrones show, yeah. I guess. But like, I he, saw the makeup for that. It's like, oh, I have to look at that every week. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I I don't really watch it, but it... oh, <laughs> I feel bad for. Uh, him. There was this post on Twitter I saw Jeff Bezos. An Amazon mm-hmm. guy and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, he liked a post. Uh, it was someone showing off their uh, their booty shorts, right? For Rings, what was it? Rings of Power? The new Lord of the Rings or whatever? Yeah. yeah. He only has like yeah. 79 likes. And I was like, how do you carefully choose, Jeff, yeah. like, what you like? What is, like everyone can see it. What is worthy of my likes? Because if you go through my Twitter likes, uh, it's nothing but bird pictures. Occasionally it'll be someone's art, someone's art or work in progress. I mostly just like work in progress, but retweet actual art. But anyway, mm-hmm. so yeah, if you go through my Twitter likes, it's nothing but birds. And it's like, what bird is worthy of being in my likes? You know, you got to prove themselves. Maybe he's just not on yeah, Twitter very I like, much. I like the African gray, the parrot. They got like red tails in the back and they're mostly gray. They're like Sin City birds. Mm-hmm. When did this bird thing come from? I, I'm s- Nesca indoctrinated me. They were like, "Yeah, birds are pretty cool. Yeah, they, they got like little, little f- 
talons that look like uh, dragon arms. They got like scales. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. No. Yeah. Do you have a bird in your house? That's that's too much responsibility. I'm, I I I live without commitment. I don't want to. I don't want that shit. If you got a bird, <laughs> would you get one that like replicates human speech? Hell yeah! Then I could just talk to it all day. I don't need nobody else. Friends with the bird. You could be. You could be a weird parrot guy Ooh. at the convention. You're gonna get like. You'd be like. You're gonna get like visitors, and then it's gonna start like dumping your like info onto them. Oh no. Info dumping on a bird. It starts it's trauma dumping. Or just real trauma dumping on a bird. Dumping. That's all I can do. That's true. Couldn't end up pooping, you're right. Ah. But Jake recently got a cat. A tiny little Yay. baby cat. You wanna tell about that? She doesn't trauma dump. You know, she just kind of bites. Regular dumps. She does regularly she pooped in the shower the other day. <laughs> I don't know how she got there. She <laughs> it's just an unwelcome surprise to one day wake up. Go in the bathroom. What's that smell? Oh my god! Oh no. It's even such a tiny little cab. I think cats do that because they know it's easier to clean I up. I like to hope so. She hasn't pooped on any of the carpet or anything. It's always been in boxes or in like, uh, the shower, I guess. Yeah, that's good at the very least. Yeah. You know what else is good? Huh? Hmm. It's one of my famous transitions. What? Wally being a cartoon collector. Oh yeah! What, what, what does that entail? Physical media? I stream that shit. I don't want physical media. It it is like a physical. I actually don't know what the special features are. Although the original Wally DVD release, which was done with like recycled paper, oh yeah, uh, spoilers. That's what the movie mm-hmm. is about and stuff. And and came with the Pixar documentary about their history. Uh oh, which probably doesn't age well now. But um, I <laughs> I remember they would play on like other TV channels and stuff afterwards. But they um yeah. So I think it became a film Twitter or even animation Twitter thing. The, like Criterion has pretty famously not done much There's with animation. There's a few, but not not as much as live action. Uh, I think. Um, what else have they done? Uh, Watership Down got a Criterion. Hang on, uh, animated. Okay, if it's Wes Anderson, it doesn't count though. That's that's my yeah. my. They did Fantastic Planet. Oh yeah. Okay, so they've done a. Oh, and Fantastic Mr. Fox. Okay, that's probably done. Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson yeah, there's the like one, yeah. two, three, four, five, yeah, six, seven. <laughs> they only got seven. Well, the thing is, uh, the Criterion Collection they have they republish it. You know, they republish the media. Yeah. But that takes a long time to mm-hmm. remaster and make sure it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad they're doing Wally, and I hope they make. I, a lot of people are saying they'd pick this because it would make them money and they do need to have like things that sell uh, every now and then. Um, but I wish they would do, you know, I, the Fleischer brothers could use a Criterion set or hmm. um, UPA who got one from Turner Classic Movies probably a hmm. decade ago at this point. Um, but like there's a lot of animation that could use like the stuff that classic film gets, um, which which I would like Criterion to do basically. But you know, congrats to them for Wally. I hope it's a good. Yeah, hope they clean up those film reels of uh, that CG film. Yeah, classic. Oh, it's uh, <laughs> like what you were showing me for Ed and Eddie. Someone did a 4K upscale. Yeah, that looks great. Waifu 2X that showed a hell. Yeah, so with my Clerks video, I found uh, someone's uh, upscale also. Clerks animated. Yeah. Oh, I like that video. As someone who watched oh, the two no. times a day, yeah. the first and last. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I well I actually saw because I saw him speak um at the uh t- like the college near where i lived at the time um and he showed the first two episodes <laughs> and i was like oh man you guys the second episode is so funny you you can't wait because it was like such a cool idea and i saw it if you saw it on abc the flintstones yeah. list joke was cut <laughs> like they basically you don't you see them watching it i think or something like that um i have the v- a vhs or i had a vhs of the two airings um but they played the second one first, and so I had to explain to all my friends why the, that episode's oh, funny. Man. And then I think this other one they aired was the one with the... Yeah, the courtroom episode. Judge Reinhold one, whichever that one. With, yeah, and that, that Bears driving thing, I was, like, on the floor. Like, th- now it is a yeah. cliche, but, like, I do remember, like, I couldn't stop laughing. Yes. Like, what is going on right now? And it did feel like <laughs> this show is going to cancel tomorrow. <laughs> That episode has no solution. It just like it just ends on that. Yeah, it just ended. I don't. Know. Well, the other thing I don't think you mentioned it, but the other thing that happened oh, that yeah. summer mm-hmm. was Survivor came out, and I think aired at the same time. Oh no! And it sort it sort of sucked all the air out of the room 
for Clerks Animated. So even if it would have had a chance, yeah. Survivor killed any of it, basically. Yeah, more reality shows, so yeah, that was the 2000s. And then you couldn't see the other episodes till, I forget when the DVD came out, but it was like maybe 2001. So most of the people I told about the first episode didn't... Mm-hmm couldn't see it dang yeah for like a year and a half if you if you were a total dork and taped it like me um and were excited and i tell my friends like yeah clerks the cartoon's on tonight and they're like yeah we're not gonna watch oh, it oh man someone had to watch it but like on occasion on youtube i'll find a clip on youtube and it's like the, a tv from the abc airing it's like damn this is like prestige like that vhs has just witnessed a rare event yeah i mean it <laughs> at the time it was very much like I felt like all of culture was like, okay, I guess we're going to let this happen. And then they're like, yes. never mind, put it back, put it back. Never again. That was when like he was considered a bigger director too. So Yeah, mm-hmm. everyone lost interest in Kevin Smith. Yeah, because his, his later movies are just inside jokes and stuff. Well, he's coming back with Clerks 3. That's, hmm. I've heard good things about Clerks 3. I, I have a theory about what happened to him what? as a director is so if you look at everything up to jersey girl there are movies about him yeah like in his life and i think jersey girl is like a natural progression for him Mm -hmm. it's not a great movie but it's like it's like what his life was about the problem was is his his audience was in college and did not want to see a movie about him and this little kid at that time like so he had a real disconnect from what the artist wants to talk Mm -hmm. about what the audience wants and when he that split happened, he kind of never got it back. And I think like if Jersey Girl was a hit, I think he would have kept on that thing because some of them are like you get bits and pieces of his life. But like Clerks too, like they didn't even film it in New Jersey. It has nothing to do with his life at the time. It's like a separate thing. And there's a real difference after Jersey Girl in my mind because they're not really mm-hmm. about his life anymore. And maybe he felt like, can you relate to Kevin Smith? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like, although he's very good on a podcast and I think I love hearing him talk, but uh, I'm hoping Clerks 3 get, because he seems like he wanted to do that based on his heart attack and stuff. And if it's like that, that's, I think, the one that people miss is, is Jane Silent Bob yeah. Yeah. reboot, right? That was, no. that was very cringy. <laughs> that's, that's like, that, watch that Ben Affleck scene. He's like, every oh. line is a reference. It was like, dude. This is like, this is bad. I, I think he says someone's, he says something about Martha in it too. It was like, oh, uh, yeah. Look, uh, I mean, recently I rewatched uh, Jane Silent Bob Strike Back, realizing, wow, this whole thing is nothing but but inside jokes I, that I never understood. But it's looking at the, just the trailer for uh, the reboot, it's like, ugh, this looks cheap as hell. It's like, I don't want to watch this. No, it's, I mean, I know a lot of people got into Kevin Smith from Strike Back, um, so I think it kind of worked because it is still a good mm-hmm. comedy, and you know Will Ferrell's in it, and true, yeah, all that stuff. It played on Comedy Central a lot, so and <laughs> yeah, like that half, like the third half of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back becomes like essentially your uh, Ready Player Ones or Space Jam Twos, but with Miramax movies. It it is, but it like everyone was like funny and in on the joke like gus van sant like counting money he was like instead of directing and then i like was like was like we found a dead hooker and ben affleck's like no i was with a hooker (laughs) last night so you can't blame me i was like no no one would do this joke now it's so i don't know all the ben affleck i will say that is one thing i miss about him is he was good in kevin smith movies like yeah i kind of miss the old ben Mm -hmm. affleck just like, well, we'll miss everyone during this uh, small break we'll take. We are already? We barely start restarted the podcast. That's like getting a job and uh, asking, like, hey, can I have, like, some vac- vacation days now? No, I mean, we'll be right back in, like, oh. 30 seconds. Oh, whoops. All right. B or B. We're always in our clubhouse getting high. Superfuckers. Everybody wishes we would die. Superfuckers. Hey, and we're back. So it's questions time. If anybody has a question, be sure to start out with the word question so it's easier to find. And uh, what's our first question? Oh, post them in the YouTube comments of this video. And uh, who's our first question by? Uh, we have one from Heath Hamilton. Uh, question to the pod boys. That, that's all of us. It's all of us in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. What's the deepest rabbit hole that any of you have ever 
went down lately. Oh, that's the biggest revelation. That is all my videos. Like usually, whenever I make a video, I just think, eh, I'll pick this topic. There's probably not that much history on this uh, particular show, like like a celebrity death match or um, Clerks the animated series. Like I thought it'd be a cut and dry short 10 minute video maybe but it's like no there is so much more history to find it and i always fall into that trap of thinking something's going to be simple but no like does it have to be a, a, like a media basically thing you just fall down i guess in general media like or anything i guess yeah anything you just like look research and like find out oh no there's so much more going on here oh there there was one this is obscure to the obscure um well, i watched these two shows on the sci-fi channel when in the 90s and one was called sci-fi buzz which was a sci-fi entertainment show only talking about sci-fi entertainment news mm -hmm. and then they had a comic book show after it and all i remember about this comic book show was they were kids in they were kids who were teenagers and they got me into daniel Cloud's eight ball and that's all I remembered. And I couldn't remember the name. And I found the show. It's called The Anti-Gravity Room. Oh, yeah. And I, th and I thought it was a sci-fi show. But it w apparently it wasn't. And I how they pitched it was the guy on Sci-Fi Buzz, the host, said, this is my nephew. I, To my understanding, that is not true. <laughs> which, world mind blown there. Um, and then I found out, like, I found the guy's Twitter. I found it was a Canadian show. I, like... <laughs> I found out, like, mm -hmm. what happened to every... That's, like, if I find a show I used to watch, I'm, like, on Twitter and Instagram, like, what are they doing now? Oh, they have kids? That's weird. And, like, then I go... But I also know, like, nobody would care other than me about <laughs> the anti-gravity room. Yeah. But then I can't find an episode where they talk about 8-Ball. And my memory of it, they talk about 8-Ball a lot. And I couldn't shut up about it because these cool kids on TV told me 8-Ball was cool. Yeah. And... Which they probably said it once. You know how, like, when you're a kid, you remember a certain part of a show and it's a big deal to you. And then you go back and you're like, oh, that was a second. Yeah. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> like, that that was barely, like, nobody saw that. Damn, this changed your life and it was only a, a throwaway line. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's happened to me a couple times. but Or, like, I've noticed when you go back, and I've, if I ever have to cut something up of clips, mm. your memory of a scene is not the scene. I almost a hundred percent unless it's like you've seen it a million times if you passing remember something and yeah. you go back you're like that that's this that was interesting yeah it's like that wasn't <laughs> as funny as i remember it being yeah but yeah the anti-gravity room is one yeah but i was happy because that had bugged me for a while that was like a magazine style show right yeah yeah, yeah. back when sci-fi channel was they have debate shows on science fiction they have, <laughs> debate shows kind of, oh they man. did yes they they did Do you, have you ever seen the one where they had the cast of mystery science theater on and they had a, <laughs> a writer of sci-fi a serious sci-fi because this was by the way the debate with mystery science theater. why didn't you guys make fun of my movie no he basically he did he didn't like that they made fun of landmarks and science fiction <laughs> oh. and it was mike nelson mary joe peel i think kevin murphy i'm not i actually had a recording of it and it's on youtube somewhere but people would debate sci-fi ideas but because that was the controversial thing with science fiction was you shouldn't joke around about it because people won't take it seriously. Oh, man. <laughs> so, like, they didn't like mystery science theater. Can you guys so that was, stop? That, that was a real... Sci-Fi oh. Channel was different in the 90s. Like, you know, it wasn't... It was like, like we take sci-fi seriously. Here's the director cut of David Lynch's Dune for the 85th time. And... <laughs> <laughs> and Star Wars and Letterbox, we're getting ratings. Hell yeah, damn! Anyway, what a different time. That's that's, that's uh, yeah. Oh, and I found out every MTV VJ from the '90s is a libertarian. That was the other deep dive I did. Classic, recently. yeah. Because a Kurt Loader, big libertarian. Not not a joke, kids. Not Cuckoo. a joke. Cuckoo. What about yeah. you, Jake? I feel like the. I don't know. If this is the deepest rabbit hole, but it's the most shocking. I feel like I've talked about it before, but, like, mm -hmm. the day that I found out that Oswald was public domain for, like, at least 60 years already mm -hmm. shook my whole foundation. <laughs> yeah, now it, like, now like, it belongs to everybody. Like, I was literally, like, um, I was at, like, the store with my parents or something when I was, like, reading it up and, like, wait mm -hmm. a minute. And at first I'm thinking that, oh, maybe this is just, like, some recent something that someone came someone came up with and that they're it's just kind of hard to look look it up because of um disney being disney no apparently people have been talking about this since epic mickey was announced it's just been like mm -hmm. low-key knowledge and disney's just been lying about this whole entire thing about like oh yeah we bought the rights to oswald 
uh, through a trade of a sportscaster. That yeah, that's fake. That, that was a lie. Real. Apparently, the, the real truth it was that it was like just film reels somebody had that they were trading for. Yeah. They haven't restored the old Oswalds, right? They're not on Disney Plus, I don't think. Nope, they aren't. Nah, uh, they don't care. They, you technically could see some of them in, on Epic Mickey, but like, like mm-hmm. I mean, they might have. I, I feel like they should just put them up. But no. they kind are of they explained doing that, that Oswald show. No, that got canceled. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, fuck. Really, like, unceremoniously. Apparently, they, like, according to people who did work on it, like, they had started working on the first episode. Like, everything was written out. They started animating the first episode, and then it got canned. Oh, no. Amazing. Oh, so Assholes. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm still holding out hope that they're going to do something Oswald related for D23, but at the same time, I, I've been looking at the way that Disney treats Oswald. Um, it's not very likely. They'll do pins and merch for him, I mean, and they know it's in high demand. They know people want Oswald stuff, but, like, they just don't seem to want to do much with him. And uh, to me, I'm thinking it's because they know they don't own all, they don't have all the rights to him, like they do other characters. So they're just kind of slowing down with him, which sucks. Yeah. But also is weird, because I'm like, okay, wait, so there is nothing legally keeping you from doing anything with this character, so... We gotta make our own Oswald, yeah. Yeah, someone should do something with... I mean, did the... I... This might be a side point, but Mm -hmm. it did the Mickey... The Mickey cartoons on Disney Plus do well? Like, I've never heard if they do or not. Uh, I don't know. I mean, most I've people... i people like them. People talk about them often. I mean, they even got a I ride mean, for it. I, I like it. My daughter watches it. I know kids do watch the... When the seasonal specials do pretty mm-hmm. well to my... Or at least, like, I hear people, like, kids talking about them. But I've never heard, like, a rating or, you know, that they're excited or, you know. Yeah. Never well, I guess it's much relative. data on it. Because, like, Netflix had had, like, a lot of watch shows, like, very, very watch shows, but, like, nah, that's enough. Yeah. Oswald Oswald exists in this specific sphere of, like, he's a character that's, like, old, still visually marketable, and also he has this whole interesting backstory to him that, like, you dump him in any setting and people will probably still love him. I mean, I made a Friday Night Funkin' mod about him, and that Mm -hmm. mod blew up and all it had was, like, one song. (laughs) People really love Oswald. Dang. Oswald, the legally distinct rabbit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It might be like a Felix the Cat thing where, like, nobody wants to do anything with, like, I don't think anyone's doing anything with Felix right now. Yeah. But, like, they're still iconic, and they're in this weird space where, like, people will get tattoos, you'll see them everywhere, and I think people just like the design, almost. They don't even know the the character, you know? But, like, according to people who work at Disney... Everyone loves Oswald, and everyone really wants to do stuff with Oswald, but for some reason, the higher-ups just keep shooting down Oswald projects. I mean, Aww. the epic Mickey only went down because Disney Interactive got shot down by, like, mm-hmm. new leadership. Like, the whole video game division for Disney, they, it wasn't that they were, like, lo- losing money or anything. They just were like, eh, we don't hey, really want to this... do video games anymore. Eh. Yeah. Did this, did this happen when Chappic came on, or was this before that? Oh, uh, I guess it depends on when he came on he came on like right right before the pandemic and then they're like never mind the pandemic hit why don't you step back <laughs> this is too much i'm trying to think when did when was the last epic mickey thing uh that was, was like that 2012 the fucking Wii era no because like oh. epic mickey 2 came out when like the 360 ps yeah yeah, yeah. 2012 out. no but th- they announced oswald for disney plus so it would have been right i mean that's how i remember they announced a project so, like, yeah. when did that project die, I guess? I don't know, because I remember when that was announced, too. Like, it was, like, really, like, low-key announced, and I remember being so excited, and then, like, a year or two went by, and we heard nothing, and then eventually someone just kind of went, oh, yeah, that got canceled. I I think I think it was Chappic. Last year was canceled. Yeah. That's That sounds like Chappic. He likes the Muppets, though, but he doesn't, doesn't <laughs> apparently doesn't like Oscar. Oh, I'm very curious to Ooh. what that show would have looked like, too. This leads us into a great question. Huh. Uh, what? Nito the King says, what do you think works better for a canceled show? A reboot or revival? Um, uh, I think it depends on the show. Sometimes you yeah. just gotta start fresh. I don't know. Um, I gotta think. What are the good examples? I mean, Beavis and Butthead is, I guess, a revival, yeah. essentially. Like, it's just same people. Oh, well, Beavis, uh, Mike Judge and who knows who else, but yeah. I think it's, like, in terms of canon. Mm. Like, let's say Futurama. 
Would you prefer Futurama to be rebooted? Nah, keep uh, it the same. That's I feel like you, you can't yeah. reboot it with a new cast. That's weird. But action, I feel like action shows, like you know, your any sort of Batman or superhero thing, that's easier to start fresh for some reason. I mean, I, I kind of wish Futurama had not continued after certain. Dang, point. Like, season three, I, season I, four, which season? Uh, wh- whenever the Comedy Central stuff started, like I, I just wasn't into that at all i mean is anyone into that was that the comment well i forget what seasons those are but i like the fox stuff you know i was okay with those movies and then Did the just movies like, count oh. as like a season they on netflix they were like listed as a whole like one season it was just a bunch of specials and movies oh yeah i see right here season. season five yeah i guess that counts yeah i would go up to season five but i think it's like it really depends on the property because like if they had done a revive a, a revival of my little pony i don't think that would have done as well as the reboot yeah you know yeah gotta start fresh you know it's easier sometimes i kind of agree i feel like it's like certain shows if it got like if it got like cut off before it got to finish doing whatever it wanted to do and there was definitely more that they could have done a revival is probably more appropriate but like if the show kind of like it had a healthy lifespan and just kind of like ended um if they wanted to come back to it yeah sure they could do a revival but like they'd probably be able to like um get mm-hmm. more fans um just doing it new re like give people like a way to be reintroduced to it oh. that makes sense you could also do both like you could do that disney i guess it was disney junior rocketeer show where they had the original rocketeer i think is her dad or something oh. or like it's like I forget how it is, but it was basically like it's definitely a reboot, but it, it's also a continuation of the original Rocketeer. I like that show, but um, it did not it it did not stick around. I don't believe. Um, but uh, and my daughter liked that show too. It was it was a fun show, but it like yeah, it basically like is it still the canon of the movie? I think it's just its own cartoon kind of canon. Basically, it would have been great if they never mentioned the canon, but it's still canon. Yeah, I think it. I don't know if, well, canon wise, I don't know if it is, but like in terms of it was sort of a reboot revival mix, I would say, because I think the original Rocketeer did the voice of her dad. Oh, and I think, but I don't think they're going to, I don't think they got Jennifer Connelly to come back, but the, they're like, I'm not um, doing Disney Junior, I have standards. Oh, that's it. Yeah, I, but it, it was it was a cool show because it mixed them. I think you can actually mix them if you do it smart enough, but you have to rely more on the reboot than the revival because at a certain point, if you do if you do a combo, the reboot has to take off because the old fans aren't going to stick around. It's like Girl Meets World didn't really take off because it relied a little too heavily on those older fans. Mm-hmm. It just didn't. What would um what would Animaniacs be classified as? A re- revival. That's a right. That's a, I'd say a reboot. It doesn't have all the classic uh, shorts or characters. Oh, good point. Kind of like I feel like it's a mix because it's it it, pl- it implies that everything from the previous show is technically canon, but like they don't have the same kind of access to that stuff as they did. So they they're having to try to they're having to try to do a lot of different. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole structure is different. Now it's only um, Pinky and the Brain and uh, the Warner Brothers and Sister. Well, so far, uh, there's a third season coming along soon. True. Is that doing well? Does anyone... I never hear it talked about outside of animation. Oh. Sure. Well, it keeps it keeps getting uh, season orders, so I think it might be. Oh. Whenever um, a season comes out, it trends. Oh, that's true. Okay. Yeah. I, I think when it comes out, I always end up watching more of the older ones than the newer ones mm-hmm. so i feel like it gets me to engage with animaniacs just not the way they probably would like me to yeah you know i'd say that in terms of i really love the reboot but i still feel like they haven't like one of my favorite things about animaniacs was the animation and while the animation in the reboot is really good uh they never they never seem to achieve that very specific style that um they had whenever tms was uh working on it where they had the anim the animaniacs like moving like this these fluid uh bouncing balloons or whatever where they're always moving in sync they never seem to do that in the reboot maybe it's the limits of the new style they're going for maybe i'm thinking it like because like there's different there's different motion styles and even the original show kind of had to switch between them depending on which studio was doing it and what they were used to um but it's like the uh looney tunes cartoons the 2021s yeah you got a point but they're more on rigs, but they're able to really stretch them to what they can do. Yeah. Oh, what? Well, no. The Looney Tunes? Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Oh, no. I was thinking, like, still thinking Animaniacs, because I remember Animaniacs did not have rigged animation. <laughs> Several people corrected me on I that. Know. I'm pretty sure both 
the new Animaniacs and the new Looney Tunes, they switch between having like hand drawn and rigs. Well, for sure. Sh- I remember in Animaniacs, sometimes it was very obvious when they switched to rigs. Oh, oh, I don't think so because I've, I've a lot of people corrected me, and I even had someone who actually worked on the show go into my DM saying, "Hey, I worked on the show. It's not rigged. It's all traditional. It's all hand, just frame by frame." Yay. Looney Tunes or uh, um, uh, Animaniacs. Oh, then it might just be the, the tune booming it. Then that's what I call it. Whenever they, uh, because you know, there's a, there's that one style where they tune boom the way lines work. You can mm-hmm. draw them, but you can also like move them individually and just kind of edit them. And it looks very close to rigging, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Speaking of animation programs, another question. All right, Michael Bausta, have you guys ever used Flip stu- Flipnote Studio? No, on the DS. No, I didn't have. I had a regular oh. DS. I had the DS Lite and the OG gray one. Oh dang! Yeah, I had. You said you did, Jake. Picto chat. Yeah, I had. Um, I had both the DSi one and the 3DS one. In fact, I, I think I could probably find my 3DS and like activate it, but eh, the 3DS is a little bit damaged, so it's not like it'd be good to draw on. Well, you gotta like export all the animations onto an SD card, my friend. Maybe one day. That sounds annoying. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like in 240p or something. Who the hell's got an SD card nowadays? I'm pretty sure all my good animations were on my sister's DSi anyway, so I'd have to find that. Oh, no. Uh, everything on my 3DS is, like, a little lame. What about you, Jim? You ever, you ever drawn on a DS or 3DS? No. <laughs> no, never. Not not even a special Knock Force episode? The, no. The DS episode? No, we never. It was just on Flash and cool, stuff. Cool, cool. Sorry. Well, it's okay. I think he had a DS, maybe. I never did. Sorry, I'm not really a gamer at all. Can't be a gamer. I, I, was, I was about to ask a... Can't be a gamer animator. I was about to ask a gamer question, but we'll just... Oh, man, I want... Let's we'll go with two Tell me the gamer yeah. question. What's... Th- I'm a gamer. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll I'll answer it poorly. Joey Boo says, question, What which console do you like the most? Huh. Tough. No. Oh. Sega Sega Genesis. Hmm. Obviously. Which version? You know, the the one I got for free. <laughs> but my friend oh, didn't sweet. want it anymore. That version. The one where it's like the Sega CD add-ons, like a tray, or is it like a top loader. Uh, a top. It was the top loader. I didn't have a, the Sega CD. You're you're overthinking. When I was, this. I was uh, asking about the model of Sega Genesis you had. Uh, I th- I, it, it was, was symmetrical. I don't know. Was yeah. it square? It was, but it had. Guess we'll n- yeah. n- never know. I d- I'm not. I forget now. But the good thing about it, if you had Sega Genesis and it was the early 2000s, you could uh, go into GameStop and like no one really cared if you took games. So that what does that mean? <laughs> you just like, hey, can I have this for free? You, you uh, sure. If that's what. You yeah, want, it's like <laughs> we don't. Care. They got a bunch of those used games. Like here, we got five copies of Madden '94. Take it. No, he's st- <laughs> he's stealing all the Madden. Don't stop him. No. <laughs> Yeah, I'd have my friend outside with a rock, and he'd break the window, and I'd throw it in the garbage bag. He'd run out, and they're like, "No, oh, he did man. it again! That window's worth more." They're like, "He could have the games for free. Just leave our window alone." He only alone. takes the hockey games Please. for some reason. Why? I think I had Beavis and Butthead. Hell yeah! I had, I had Street Fighter. I had I had a bunch. I had Sega One, Sonic One and Two, which I still play Sonic uh, One and Two because my daughter loves Sonic, so we play. We play the the classics, yeah, you know? Sonic. but yeah, Sonic rules, and kids love Sonic. People don't. Yeah, the Sonic game looks great. Hopefully, I'm very interested to see how that's going to affect, like when Sonic Frontiers com- comes out. How's that going to change the conversation? Oh well, man, like they're taking themselves more seriously. For reals this time, we're going to make a good game, as opposed to the other times where we didn't want to make a good game. We just wanted to just pump shit out. I got that anime opening, anime ending. Yeah. But Pan, your favorite console? The GameCube, I guess. Yeah. Super. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. Something from the 2000s would be good. Either that or, I don't know, just in general, the uh, the Xbox, GameCube, PS2, Dreamcast era was the perfect era of just like, has every game and they were just complete, you know? There was no DLC. They were class. It was like a good mix of retro but modern. It's got everything. In that era. It wasn't DLC. It had to put in like a second disc. Yeah. It had it all. Simpler times. What about you, Jake? Uh, I would say instantly my brain went to like a PlayStation. Either PlayStation 4 or 5. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just like the aesthetic of those better. Mm-hmm. But I know that I probably... I have more games for the Wii than any other console. 
and I have more Why memories attached to that. I don't know. I just like Sh- shovelware games. I know I got the um, I got the GameCube first, and that was on accident because mm-hmm. my my grandma was trying to get me the SpongeBob SquarePants movie PC game because I really oh, liked no. the. And then she bought demo. you a GameCube. No, she bought me the GameCube version of the game when I wanted the oh. PC version. So my parents were just like, oh, "Okay, we'll get you a GameCube." <laughs> well, I remember getting a GameCube at GameStop when they were like thirty bucks. Oh, sweet! Came with a controller. Pretty good. Very good deal. I was like, "Wow, amazing!" GameCube's pretty good. Hell the yeah! Wii can play GameCube games, so some of them would. The newer versions of the Wii took out the GameCube functionality. Oh, ew! Whoa, <laughs> I wasn't that. <laughs> and then like the latest version, I think it was the Red Wii. Uh, no internet connectivity. Awful, awful. I don't know why. It was a top loader. It was so weird. It was like a hundred bucks. Hmm. Trying to prevent you from home brewing it, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I always like watching those videos of people uh, destroying a Wii, just like sawing off most of it and says, yeah, you can just make your own portable Wii. Yeah, yeah. Whatever works. It works great unless you want to do like motion controls or play GameCube games. Favorite console I'd say is the Steam Deck. Ooh, I've been having fun with it. Oh, boy. Possibly might get that someday. Yeah. I mean, you should. Yeah. You have a MacBook, so you're not going to get a Windows laptop. When is it officially coming out? Because I still I pre-ordered that, but I mean, like... You have to check it, because the moment it became on pre-order, I put down the $5 deposit, so I got mine relatively early. But if you ordered one, you should be getting it by the end of 2022. But if you're listening to this podcast in the future, comment below if Jake has his steam deck or not yeah yeah that's just from the future is jake neutron have a steam deck and what does he use it for what does he play on it coo, coo, coo. What does he do? go bother him tweet tw- tweet at him yeah right now instantly in the future a year from now mark your calendar pan ah what at abe rammy hi pan uh-huh long time <laughs> listener first time questioner mm-hmm. you ready for this yeah what is your favorite exotic beverage exotic beverage <laughs> Yeah, because you traveled in Europe and whatnot. What? What? Fanta? I don't know. We went to the Fanta. Fanta. We went. Hey, it's popular in Amsterdam, but and but uh, we went to the Coca Cola Museum in Atlanta, Georgia, and they had a what was called Sunfill. It was an African soda that the Coca Cola company made. And we when we went again recently to Momocon for the at the Coke convention, Coca Museum, they didn't have Sunfill no more. They got rid of it. It tasted like mouthwash you could drink. What? They had a lot of weird flavors there. It's some that just tasted like mint, like actual pure mint. Oh, I need to do the. I never did the Coca Cola Museum. Yeah. Well, oh, it's that. amazing. No, I, I drink way it. too much. No more Sunfill. I did the. I did the puppetry arts thing. I didn't. I should have done. Oh, we did anyway. that too. That was fun. But that was yeah. But the see, I saw Fuego at a grocery store, so that was pretty exotic for me. Yeah. yeah. There's always next time. But I did. I do like. There's a drink, an English drink. I two. I like one's Iron Brew and the other's Lucas Aid. Lucas, Lucas Aid. Aid. I legitimately like. What's and it taste any, like? If anyone is, um. It was actually meant to help like English kids when they're sick and stuff. And there's regular, I guess. Wait, Lucas Aid or the yeah? That's, oh, they said Lucas. That's the one. Aid. Yeah. I was like, what kind of what, Lucas what kind of Aid? Aid's you doing? <laughs> Sorry, I think I said it. But yeah, they, there's the red one, which tastes like medicine-y. But I do the orange one, which you can find around where I live in Brooklyn. There's a bunch of stores that have it, um, and it kind of gives you like a pick pick me up and stuff. It's like a possibly healthier red bull but the the other thing is in england all their sodas actually have sugar not high Mm -hmm. fructose corn syrup so like anytime i'm there i'm like i do drink a lot of soda because if you drink soda here you feel like tired Mm -hmm. afterwards and in england i was like i feel feel amped up (laughs) this is great well it's like a (laughs) it's like it was like seeing fanta in europe it's like a completely different color and taste yeah i've been there yeah Tastes weird. I mean, not having, if you can get like the, what people call the like Mexican Coke, Mexican Sprite, because they're in glass bottles and stuff, which is like kind of a whole thing that we should probably rename. But, uh, cause I think they're just sold everywhere. They're not necessarily. Well, the Mexico from Mexico one, Mexico, they still but, use um, sugar cane, which is the difference. Yeah. the And this, the Sprite one as well does that. And they're so much better. I, I, I wish we would just do well, that. Well, we do but. have Coca Cola, Sugar Cane, and Svet Bear. Mm-hmm. Like they have that, oh. I think they used to call it Coca Cola Life or something. Yeah, they tr- they try to do it, but uh, Americans are gross. And <laughs> the other one, basically, you know. But if you did that with like a fountain soda, like 
we had sugarcane sprite at mcdonald's that would be the most powerful sprite like i actually maybe that's why they don't do it it's like too Ooh. powerful because mcdonald's sprite is the most powerful right Wait, so, let's push the question further if, nothing if can kill drop, them no nothing can yeah kill mcdonald's sprite what's a what's a soda that you always get from a restaurant because you feel that version tastes better than what you get from the store well fucking mcdonald's sprite there you go if you drop your cell phone in there <laughs> hell charge yeah completely i dropped a quarter in there and i picked it up and it came out as 20 dollars. Oh, yeah I, I don't know how that's even possible, but that's how powerful Sprite is. I was feeling sick. I drank that. Not only did I feel better, I punched a car oh, and flew fuck like yeah. I was the whole. So, so be careful, kids. Don't drink McDonald's Sprite. Just like, you know, it's probably... Oh, yeah. Pan was there. He saw this happen when I punched that car in the glare. Hell yeah. Maybe. I don't want... <laughs> Just drink up the Sprite. That stuff will burn your a hole in your stomach. That's the only uh, setback. It will burn, burn through your intestines. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you have to drink Please. it. Drink yeah. it and quit it. You have to. What about you, Pan? What, what What was the question again? What soda that you get from a restaurant that you feel tastes different than oh. buying it from the store? Well, yeah, true. S- Sprite. Yeah, yeah. But also, as a kid, I remember getting uh that iced tea that you would get powder of and you mix into like a a glass. For some mm-hmm. reason, I, there was this placebo effect in my brain where it felt like yeah, only if it has two ice cubes in it, it tastes perfect, and it has more. It's a different flavor. I don't know what would, what that was, but it made sense in my head. You know, from the concentration yeah. of uh, water or whatever. Yeah. What about you, Jake? Yeah. I feel like I feel like my answer's already been said. Sprite. Like if I sometimes I will literally order Sprite and it would just be water. I'm always mm. fond of uh, Dr Pepper from Sonic. More syrupy. <laughs> my brain. You said Sonic. <laughs> I didn't think about the restaurant. They still haven't done a collaboration. <laughs> the movie in the place. Please. Oh, come on, Sonic wow. 3, they should do Get it. Some onion rings. Perfect. But maybe like maybe they don't want to do it because it'd be a whole trademark issue. Yeah, it'd be too confusing. Get Sonic at Sonic. Do they they have hot dogs there? Don't they have hot dogs? Yeah, there? yeah. Yeah, do chili dogs. Like come on. Definitely do it. Man, Sonic and chili dogs. That's the one thing I learned. You can't get kids to eat chili dogs. Because I was like, hey, Sonic eats them. And- like, I don't like chili dogs. It looks gross. Even as a kid, I was like, eh. What? Gross. Just diarrhea I all over. One. I tried one from Checkers. It was not great. Okay. Well, well, you gotta, you're got you not doing it right. You got to get some good good, good dogs. And then, I don't know. Hot dogs are sort of a, can be gross. But if you get a good hot dog, it can really yeah. work out for you. It sounds like a great note to end on. Getting a great dog <laughs> for the hot dog. Get, hot dog. get a good dog. Ooh. If, you, if you're ever in Iceland, get a hot dog there. Iceland? No joke. The, the, the You've been to Iceland? Yeah. In Iceland. Mm-hmm. Yes, I have been to Iceland. And the, they've got they've got really good hot dogs in Iceland. And that's not a joke at all. Seriously. Do we have any uh, final thoughts? Hot dogs in Iceland? No. Never tried it. Well, in general, in general. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're winding down hot the episode. Dog. You, you hear the uh, Rayman music. Oh, no. Right oh, oh, no. Is that all? I guess this is the end. Oh man, get some hot dogs, people. Go to Iceland, bring me some hot dogs. I want some. I want an ice dog. Yeah. Oh wait, 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 wait. Ice dog. Didn't the queen die? Eh. Huh? King